Good day, people of YouTube. So now it's due for lighting effects or various other things. Our commanders at the end of day six are Abandoned Outpost, Agility, and a Basic Island. Although at least it's a Judge Promo DCI Basic Island. So we'll see how that goes. It's probably just because I've got glare on the screen. I'm playing this, I'm recording this at a different time. Anyway, day seven. So we've got a good mono blue deck currently built up. We could, in theory, use Elgaf just on his own. But we only have a couple of scry cards. We also have Slim Voda, which might not be a terrible decision, but I think he's going to be better in the 59 as opposed to the 99. But we're still hopeful that we can get some decent white or some decent red and go proper partners. So, Commander Legends booster number three. Still haven't picked up a master pack at this point, but we might have even more decisions to make about which commander we're going for. And also, I'm just raising some this white fluff in that stocking. Oh dear. All right. Let's see what we can grab. We grab a Friday Night Magic token, which is a goal. All right. Number one, we have the Deranged Assistant, which is a reason, which is accelerant in blue. And the only cost is to mill cards. Uh, we don't have any way of reanimating spells. We did have a couple of options with that a little earlier in the pick order, but it's fine. Mana Ramp is usually okay. Impulsive Pilferer. This is a one drop that Spell Table refuses to identify, except there's possibly a Caracas. So, um, when it dies, it creates a treasure token. It is a 1 1. It also has Encore. Encore means I can exile it from the graveyard and I get a copy that's attacking everybody. Um, most likely, the game I'm going to be playing against. Um, the, the game I play with this deck is going to be against Vanna. So, we'll see how that develops in terms of things. But hey, we have another Encore card, but it's in green. Probably not going to use it. But we'll see if Spell Table wants to identify it this time for us. Come on, spell table. You know this is a card. My camera is not that unclear. All right, fine. This is going to be a bit slower then. So this can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and again has encore, so it can come back from the graveyard. And a seven four attacking everybody is not the worst thing in the world, and also that has ruined the focus. Ah, uh, come on, behave, behave. I'm going to have to adjust the focus settings, and that will take me a while. All right, bear with on this one. Okay, quick reset, but let's see if this can continue going. In theory, it's now set to just manual focus, so hopefully it won't adjust, but I don't know if Spell Table overrides that. Anyway, next up we have the Exquisite Huntmaster, which is my third Uncle card in the road, and it's clearly auto-focusing, which is annoying. All right, so rather than mess around with this, this is going to be a 4-2-4-4, four, 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 and when it dies, I make an Elf token, and it has Encore, so basically it can go and attack everybody, and then create three additional elf tokens when it comes back. So, Uncle's quite a good mechanic, actually, from what little I've played of it. Armory of Iroas. We already have one of those, so strictly speaking, we shouldn't have two, but I guess we might allow ourselves to have that. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We then have Prying Eyes, which, as I've mentioned in a previous go of this, hey, Spell Table actually knows what it is. Also knows what that is. Hey, is it actually working? No, it just says no clue what the Encore cards are. So I'm willing to make a guess. Oh, well. Um, yeah, it's not a great rate, unfortunately. For six mana, I'd be expecting to draw four cards with no drawback. Although there are some decks where the discard would be relevant. We have Soul Fire, which is a removal spell. Um, target creature you control deals damage to equal to its power to any target. For one of the Black Rose and the Monarchy. So the Monarchy, just bring out with my Monarch token here, which we'll see if Spell Table recognizes the Monarch token. The spell Table does not recognize the Monarchy. It does, however, recognize one of the Black Rose. So the Monarchy basically states that um, it's a game effect that only applies when somebody becomes the Monarch for the first time, Hail to the King, and means that whoever has it at their end step draws a card. However, whenever a creature does combat damage to you, the player, while you are the Monarch, they steal the crown, and they become the Monarch until such time as it goes around. So basically, this passes around additional draws as you attack people, and it does encourage some good interplay, and I do like the Monarchy as a mechanic. We then have the Sentinel Spider, which is the anti Sarah Angel, I think. 4-4 four, four, for 5, Vigilance and Reach. But it's an okay card. We then have the Filigree Familiar, which is 
a two life gain thing when it comes into play and we will draw a card when it dies so a bad solemn solemn simulacrum is a similar card that gives you a land when it comes into play and allows you to draw a card when it dies still potentially playable we have court churn which again would be great if we had this graveyard deck but uh, mill free cards return a creature from the graveyard to our hand so pseudo card draw i suppose Marble Diamond is ramp, and it's in the right colour. So that is on the agenda for a pick, just on that basis. But anything that allows us to basically play this on turn 2, and then on turn 4 have 4 mana available, is probably a good thing. So currently, that's looking okay for us. We have Gale Strike, which is return target tapped creatures to its owner's hand, and draw a card. It's removal, and it also stops an attack. So when they attack, they normally tap, and we could then do that and get rid of a spell that way. I'm not massively excited about that, but we'll see how it goes. Scholar of the Ages, I think we already have one of these, but, um, or at least we have the option of one of these. No, actually, we, no, 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 we had something similar there. So, enter the battlefield, return two to target instant sorceries from the graveyard to a hand. A 3-3 three, three for 7, though, is a really bad rate, if we can't find anything else. Hero's Blade. Now, this is a card that actually might benefit from Rogak here. Um, equipped creature gets plus 3, plus 2. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under our control, we may attach Hero's Blade to it. So that's for free. So basically what we could do is we could not cast Rogak on turn one. Turn two, cast Hero's Blade, and then cast Rogak and immediately have a four free first strike menace trampler. So currently the Hero's Blade looks like it's getting in on that basis. Uh, next up we have Feast of Succession, which is when it behaves. Nope. So all creatures get minus four, minus four until end of turn. So it's mass removal, which is what we like. And also you become the monarch, so you get additional card draw, which we also like. Triumphant Reckoning is a game-winning card. Um, unfortunately, it is first thought it's a Ragnar Signet, then thought it was a Wall of Stone, and then thought it was an Insult Scimitar. Neither of those are none of those are game-winning cards, though the Ragnar Signet would at least be useful. So Triumphant Reckoning, return all artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, yeah, that is a ridiculously powerful effect, but it does cost 9. Still, that's on the maybe pile as well, depending on what else we have. We then have Zara Renegade Recruiter, which is our legendary creature for the pack. Is it going to tell me what it is? I might as well just search it here. It's going to be quicker. So Zara Renegade Recruiter. Um, when it attacks, I could have done that actually from the start. Whoops. Oh dear, I've been away for a day and clearly I've forgotten how the spell table works. Alright, so, uh, flying for free. When it attacks, you look at the defending player's hand and put a creature card from it onto the battlefield, under your control, tapped and attacking that player or Craneswalker. Then that creature goes back to their hand. So if people have mana issues or just have big creatures stuck in their hands, Zara is an interesting way of actually just stealing it and attacking them with it. And actually, that would be really cool to do as an effect here. Hmm. The downside is it doesn't have partner, so we'd be using that or we'd be using something else. I mean, we're early enough that we could pivot, though. We then get another partner commander, and it is a Chroma. Boom Reflection, indeed. Uh, Vision of Ixdor. There we go. So the Vision of Ixdor is a 7 mana 6-6 six, six creature with flying, first right visions, and trample, and at the beginning of each combat, until the end of the turn, each creature I control gets plus 1 plus 1 if it has flying, plus 1 plus 1 if it has first strike, and so on for double strike, and a bunch of other effects. This also would work quite well with Rogak, which means we'd then have the option of possibly swapping our plus 1 plus 1 counter synergies for an Akroma, but it wouldn't mean we'd cut ourselves out of blue, because this combo is really good but we'd be cutting ourselves out of blue, and we'd spent most of our time building up some good blue stuff. Um, final card, by the way, is an Entourage of Trest, which is just a, another card that cares about the monarchy. So, oh, this is tricky. So basically, our decisions here are thus. I think on the basis that we probably want to be playing white in some way now, we're going to take the Marble Diamond as one of our picks. And then it's just what else we want to do. Obviously, we already have these. A Chroma is a good win condition, even if we just go into white. Um, the only downside, of course, is that we wouldn't then have the ability to play all three of these. And unless we get extremely lucky now, we're not going to get any more legendary creatures. And certainly our color combinations are kind of fixed here. Zara doesn't do enough by herself, I don't think. It's a really good card, and I love the effect, but I think for five... 
I'd almost prefer to be in scrying and I don't know. This is tricky because we could we could go blue red. We could just decide to do this. We then have Rogak in the deck, but we then lose the ability. We would be a point in the saving the marble diamonds. So I think Zara's out on their basis, and then it's something like so. Okay, if we assume Triumph of Reckoning, well, it's an awesome spell, and it would win us the game. It is a bomb, but nine mana is a long way to go into a game without necessarily having an answer. I think. The way I'm looking at this is we're going to take Marble Diamond, Hero's Blade, and a Crover, and we're going to hedge. So we're still kind of hedging this, and we might go some combination of these three, but now with Hero's Blade and a Crover, we are looking more towards White-Red going forward. We still have some Ravnica packs in there, so we have some guild things that could help us out as well, because the, the guilds are all two-color uh, two color sets, basically. So all the two-color combinations have a bunch of cards to go with them, and if we can get some good... Um, Boros, or is it, or yeah, or Azorius? We might make the decision based on that. But I would love to go Rogak and Akrova. So we're going to take these three as our picks for this week, and yeah, that will do. Okay, we're done. So next time we will pick another pack, and we will hope to have even more interesting decisions to make, and hopefully to improve the deck somewhat. At the very least, we have some mana ramp going on, but um, we'll see. Until next time.